Dungeons and Daddies is a rowdy, horny, violent podcast for grown-ups. Content warnings can be found in the description. There is unrest in the forest. There is trouble with the trees. For the vampire has been vanquished and the garden witch is pleased. Welcome to Dungeons and Daddies, not a BDSM podcast, sometimes a BDSM podcast, a podcast where we play D&D and it's about four dads flung into the forgotten realms in a quest to rescue their lost sons. My name is Freddie Wong. I play Glenn Close, a bard rock and roll Christmas cover band dad. And this week, my Glenn fact, my Glenn dad fact is this. Uh, whenever they're on tour and they're driving the bus around, or let's be honest here, the large Ford Econo van around mm-hmm. and they ever pass through New Mexico... Glenn makes it a point to go out of the way to visit Roswell, home of the first alien encounter. And he's got so much like Roswell merch and shirts and stuff like that. You know, they got like the alien sticker and stuff Does like that. Does he get that alien jerky? The alien jerky is what? something on the way to Las Vegas, Will. They don't have like, the alien. But you're telling me they don't have alien jerky in Roswell, New what Mexico? Is- what is alien jerky? It's just on the way to Vegas. You see a sign that's like a big alien. It says fresh alien jerky. And it's like, I don't no, know. They it's, like, don't. You it's a fun alien? tourist trap. Yeah, that's the, that's the promise of it. Okay, yeah. I I knew it was like that or like a sex thing. No, yeah, it's, it's like it's like the thing on the fucking side of the road. It's just fun tourist traps. America's great. <laughs> All right, so and then, by the way, no, there isn't there isn't alien fresh jerky in Roswell. That is unacceptable to me. I guess they respect aliens too much. Oh, like, yeah, we're yeah, not gonna yeah. we're not gonna. This yeah, is they serious. have museums. Will not like <laughs> kitsy tourist traps. They have museums with dioramas of aliens and government agents. Wasn't your dad fact last week about Roswell? No, it was about the fact that we're gonna storm Area Fifty One, baby, September. Oh. 20th. Okay. My, my name is Matt Arnold. I play Daryl Wilson, a stay-at-home uh, coach dad who's now a barbarian. I feel like I've gotten a little too complicated with my dad facts, so I'm just kind of going back to basics. Like, you know my name. <laughs> so what's my favorite color? Daryl's favorite color is brown. Brown? Brown. <laughs> brown, yeah. It's, it's meat, wood, good brown ale. Does he have, like, a specific shade? Like leather brown. Leather brown. <laughs> he says a good cup of coffee should look like a pigskin. Just a little bit, just a little bit of half and half, and a little bit of sugar. So he's a leather daddy. That's what you're saying. (laughs) Oh no! (laughs) Um, Sure. Indiana Jones bomber jacket, fedora brown. Yeah, no, leather brown is a a, a color. It's like a slightly lighter brown than flat brown. Next, you'll probably find out his like favorite, you know, TV show. Just basic stuff. By the way, what everyone's favorite TV show if their dad's is Twenty Four. Obviously. Oh my god, that's so true. That was my dad's favorite fucking show. He watched every season Same of that garbage ass show. Uh, my dad watches Big Bang Theory. There you go. Bazinga. So does my dad. Carol loves Big Bang Theory. My dad is really into um, America's Got Talent. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Specifically YouTube clips of America's Got Talent <laughs> is ninety percent of his media consumption now. Hi everyone, I'm Henry. Shit. We've crossed over. I just introduced myself as Henry Oak, my Dungeons and Daddies character. <laughs> I'm Will Campos. I play Henry Oak, a uh, granola munching, Birkenstock rocking, hippie nature druid dad. My fun fact about Henry this week was, in fact, going to be his favorite TV show. Oh. Henry's favorite TV show is The Sunrise. <laughs> what a fucking asshole. It's The Sunrise. What a turd. Oh. 
my God. What an absolute no. nerd. No. You know, it's on every no. day. No, no. It never gets canceled. Oh, no. no. And mm. you can just get up and watch it to get your oh. morning going. I hope it gets canceled now. Yeah. Better than a piping hot cup of coffee, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Hello, my name is Beth May, and I play Ron Stampler, emotionally detached stepfather and rogue. My fun fact about Ron this week is that uh, it's a it's a little story about how he met Samantha, and he met Samantha, who was looking for a uh, a new companion, so to speak, by catfishing her. Um, <laughs> Ron made a profile on the local Humane Society as a schnauzer. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? And the rest is a story of love. Wait, and no, 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 not the rest of the story. <laughs> Tell us no, what no, happened no. after. Don't yada, yada, yada. Listen, this. Samantha was seeking, you know, she was recently widowed. Her her life wasn't going great, and she just needed something else in her life, something to really love and to, to be loved by. And she thought that she wanted a schnauzer, but what she realized when she found out that the schnauzer was actually a man <laughs> <laughs> was that she wanted a man who would... Act like a schnauzer. I don't understand the mechanics of how this happened. The more Daryl finds well, out about okay, Ron's life, he looks at Ron's marriage and he just can't fucking understand <laughs> what is wrong with well, okay. Daryl. To explain, fun fact about Beth this week <laughs> is that Beth has a, an app on her phone called Pet Finder where literally it's like Tinder for adoptable animals. I hope it's not like Tinder for it's adoptable it. animals. <laughs> <laughs> And it's hot as hell. Um, Do you want to fuck a corgi? <laughs> no, I just want to look at the... <laughs> that, that's not better. That's not, better. Not, not in a... No, just in a, like, a very wholesome... Like, I just like... Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, Sexy you, schnauzers are in your area. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just like... You know, I have a lovely cat that is awful, but I love her so much. She's my entire life. Shout out to Teddy. Um, but... But, you know, I just like to look at dogs that I could have in my future. <laughs> oh my and um, they have like these little profiles on Pet Finder and it's like an app. So I feel like Ron would. So you're thinking sure. maybe somebody, one of those dogs wouldn't be a real dog but instead of man. I feel like I might. <laughs> right now I'm single, but my best prospects are probably on Pet Finder. <laughs> Not as pets, but as men masquerading as pets. So Ron is a rescue husband. That's yes. <laughs> That's how she. I rescued my husband. And somebody's like, you didn't rescue your husband. <laughs> Been, like you got a free way, He rescued me. <laughs> <laughs> who rescued him? I'm looking at the site under about house trained. What did Ron put down? <laughs> yes, I assume. Yeah. <laughs> and then also vaccinations up to date, spayed and neutered. <laughs> so wait, when she met up with Ron and realized, oh, this is a man and not a schnauzer, how did Ron play that off? What was like what was step two? The world's for him? hardest mm. natty 20 charisma check. <laughs> <laughs> no, he said, I told you I knew how to shake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. I mean, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good. Yeah. Holy shit! And she smiled that's and they got married. That's not all I know how to do. All right. I'm Anthony Birch. Uh, I'm your daddy master. Hi, daddy master. Um, I think I feel like I might have referenced this on the show before, but all this talk about people's favorite shows, like one of the last like genuinely trying to be thoughtful things my dad ever said to me. He's not dead. Uh, <laughs> Jesus but God. He uh, we we were sitting around just trying to be fucking father and son, just sitting there watching TV or whatever, and we're watching Two and a Half Men because it's his favorite goddamn show. And at one point, midway through, Ashton Kutcher says something and it doesn't go over that well, and he goes, "You know, Ashton Kutcher makes you realize just how much." Charlie Sheen brought to this role. Wow. <laughs> and I think about that, I'd say, once every week. Wow. Dang. Um, All right. This is a heck of a beginning of this podcast. <laughs> so you're actually going to do some fucking uh, Dungeons & Dragons ass tower dungeon exploration. I am so looking forward to playing just normal D&D in a tower. I have my D20 in my hand. <laughs> ready to go. Ready to fight. I'm ready to swing an axe. Let's do this. When last we left you, you were in the foyer of Terry Sr.'s tower and a rift in the dimension opened up and you found out that Terry Jr. is up at the top of the tower trying to open a door to the astral plane so he can get his father's decapitated head back. So you got the kids that you rescued from the basement. You've got Payton. The only place you haven't gone in the tower is upwards. Uh, yeah, I want to ask the kids, like, what's in this tower? What's above us? What's ahead of us here? The little girl, Caitlin Kremadinik, says, this is where the French guy lived and... He kept all of us down in that basement that you saw, but when he was hanging out with Terry Jr., I think he had like a bunch of special rooms for just the two of them to hang out. Not in a gross way, but like in a like is... father-son bonding kind of... Can't, I cannot preface hard enough. Not in a gross way. Mm -hmm. In a 
not entirely wholesome, but not entirely weird sort of bonding experience. So I think that's probably what you'll find. I and bet it was a game room. Terry Jr. was always like, why don't we have a game room? And I was like, They're life's actually, a game, bucko. The game room is actually directly above us. Whoa. It's a game Like, room. no joke. But what's a game room with no games? I think I say we find out, folks. Shall we forge on ahead here? I think we should proceed with all due haste, but with caution as well. That's what I recommend. All right, Peyton, you're going to take care of all the, the kiddos down here? Heck yeah. You guys are all a team. Peyton's your coach. What, what's your team name, all you kids? Oh, man. Uh, what should a team name evoke? What's the most important thing in, in like naming a Unity team? Unity and strength. Well, I think that should be up to the team, don't well, you? Yeah, Peyton was asking a question about but, what it should But evoke. you're not on the team, so maybe Peyton should ask that question to his fellow teammates. I just, you know, I think you got to let the kids kind of come up with their own fun thing hey, here. Hey, Peyton, do you want to hear my answer to the question? Or yeah, do you I, was wanna... a- I was asking you. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, Unity... <laughs> <laughs> Unity and strength is what I think, but you know, yeah, like you know, you got. That's you kind gotta... of a long team name, though. <laughs> Unity and strength is kind of <laughs> fascistic, man. I think it's got to be about having a good time. I think it... I wasn't suggesting the name is Unity and strength. I was saying that it should evoke the yeah, idea. That's what of... I, I just want to know what it evoked. Like, like <laughs> yeah, it's like high level kind of thing. So, you know, I I want I respect the team should come up with their own thing. But if you're asking for opinions from the adults, I think a good team spirit kind of thing would be like respecting each other and getting along and having a good time. Yeah, we're called the Paydens. <laughs> All that's, right. That's our team day. We're the Paydens. All right. All right. Hands in the middle, everyone. On three, go Paydens. One, two, three, go Paydens. Go Paydens. Go Paydens. Go Paydens. All the kids do it. So the kids are pretty pumped about it. The kids are like fine with it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> they, they halfway get. One of them's like, I want to see my dad. Yeah. Well, my dad died. I just All right, Payne. You got it down here. We're going to go up there and we're going to save, Ron, we're going to save Terry Jr. Let's do this. Yep. Okay. Yep. As you go upstairs, you. Uh, Is it an auto save point? Yeah, yeah. You see the fucking like hourglass sort of rotate in the corner, and the don't like turn the off arrows the PS4. going around. Please don't do not turn, turn off. off it will PS4. corrupt your save file. Do not turn off the podcast, or <laughs> the save will get corrupted. <laughs> You'll forget everything you heard about the podcast. Um, <laughs> there's three health packs and a bunch of ammo. All and right, the, great. You know what? I think these little gamer asides are one of my favorite parts of the podcast. I just want to yeah. say that it's always a treat. You guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one more way we can exclude that, and that's what I really like about it. Um, hey, I've played some Tony Hawk in my day. <laughs> All right. You walk up the stairs, and the first thing that hits your eye in this new room Ow. is a big... <laughs> you fucking dork. You absolute... Injure him. Injure him. You absolute nerd Freddy dork. Freddie did it that's a half a, second before I could. That's a D4. That's a D4. Right? Yeah. Yeah, something hit my eye and did three damage to my eye. Yeah. Ow. Oh, do we all roll a D4? No, is I feel like Freddie alone is responsible <laughs> for that one. Yeah, I feel like that sin is his alone. Three damage. Um, so you see a big vat of something that is brown and is your favorite color. Uh, it's the size of, a, of like one of those like county fair dunk tanks that would somebody would sit on top of and like mock you. You see this vat of this like brown liquid that's kind of sloshing around. <laughs> and How viscous is this liquid? It seems like pretty thick. They got a stew going in there. It seems like poo, right? Uh, no, it's, okay. it doesn't smell. It doesn't smell like anything. Uh, it's, well, you have to get closer to it. But behind that, you see the stairway continuing upward. But there is a a, a gate in front of it with a wire leading from the vat to the gate. Now, when you say wire, where is the wire actually connecting? Uh, I'm going to roll perception to see where this wire is actually touching the vat. Sure. Oh, you could have gotten a free one out of Anthony. He was just going to tell you. Oh, well, I got five. Now he doesn't have to say shit. <laughs> well, so you guys can look too. <laughs> Daryl doesn't see, but uh, I honestly, I don't understand perception checks in Dungeons and Dragons. I just flat out do because not fucking like, understand. Because I look them. more. Yeah, he's like, I look harder? <laughs> like, what does it even mean? I think it's. I think what it is, is it's like your base level is what you can observe, and then if you get a good one, you get a little bit of a hint. I mean, you can look at a, you can look at a Where's Waldo all day. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to find Waldo. <laughs> I feel like perception should be That is genuinely like, the in- best explanation of <laughs> I've ever heard a perception check. I think it's more for like inferring. Like, I feel like a perception check could be like, you can tell that this cable was like recently laid or well, something like that. that's like, like investigation. That. Investigation, oh. I get. It's me like when I'm like, when I know that one of you guys are rolling perception, I'm like, ooh, I have to pay attention now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a signal to the path. Yeah, okay. it's just a signal to the players to be like, this matters. Okay, okay. so uh, so yeah, you don't, you're not going to get any additional information. I like that. But you see that the wire is running up to the side of the vat. And on the side of the vat, so basically there's a clear glass window on the front of the vat where you can see the sloshing liquid. And on the side is a little control panel with a dial. And examining the dial, you can see that all the way to the left is a crude caricature drawing of Terry Jr. And all the way to the right is a crude caricature drawing of Terry Sr. So it's like cheese oil. There's only two options. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's either cheese or petrol. Yes, it's like <laughs> cheese oil. That sketch that you love so Truly very much. A reference for no one. <laughs> 
<laughs> Anthony, can I just say that's so obvious that you went back and played all five missed games? Yeah. <laughs> like, this is so drawing it's that a very missed ass. Okay, so the dial's in the middle, and on one side is Terry Jr., and the other side is Terry Sr. And then above that is a button. And above that's a button. Petrol. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my no, God. Oh, cheese oh, Anthony, God. can you recap this <laughs> sketch <laughs> from that Mitchell and Webb look, cheese away, so that the audience at home knows what up. we're talking yeah, about? Yeah, so the sketch is... <laughs> The sketch is that Matt, Will, and Freddie go, you got to see this sketch. You're not going to think it's funny, but it's going to stick with you for months, and it will slowly become the funniest thing you've ever seen. And then you watch it, and it's just David Mitchell or the other one uh, building a robot that's supposed to delta between cheese and petrol. And he just goes, no, that's petrol. And it's not funny. Oh, that's and why then, it's not funny. You didn't understand it. See, they, they, designed, they designed a robot to smell all things, but he only has a dial that smells either cheese or petrol. God. Okay, but here's a real talk. I I didn't believe it when they told me. But then a couple days later, I was like, you know what? When Cheezoid says petrol, I did get a good laugh about it. And now it haunts me every night. Fucking, I can't stop thinking about coward. it. Fucking coward. You fucking fell to peer pressure. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So, guys, what do you think this vat does? That, that- All I know is this is the worst game room I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> this is the game room that's not even darts, man. Do you think this is like a, a jukebox? I think, think this is attainable, though. You know, if I ever <laughs> get Terry Jr. back. Maybe yeah. this is like one of those smart bathtubs that Carol's always asking for, where uh, you get like, and those are the two settings. Like, you get the bathtub ready for Terry Sr. It gets it to, you know, 84 degrees or whatever he likes. Mm-hmm. And then if you turn it the other way, a it's... big old whiff of this vat. Famous last words. <laughs> roll perception. It's up to your neck, so you'd have to like peek okay. over a little bit. I'll peek yeah. over, I rolled a six. You rolled a six? It smells like raw meat. Oh. Hmm. hmm. Is this like a regenerative vat or something, maybe? It's like it smells like meat, maybe okay, well, it's a the- tartar pit. Or alien jerky. <laughs> roll D four, roll D four, classy D four for a steak tartar ref. <laughs> I got a three for that. Thanks, Will. I got a three, too. I apologize for nothing. <laughs> Another two damage. I got a four. Ooh. You guys roll so well when you're self-immolating. <laughs> um, I'm going to go up to that door and like take a quick look at it, see if there's any way to open the door. Is okay, it, so on the door, there is... There's a way to skip this room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you want to skip my, <laughs> my, my puzzle. So on the door, the wires basically go into where there would be a, a doorknob. Okay. But there's no lock or anything like that. There's just like the sort of very small hole in the door where the two wires go in. Guys, what do you think Jack Bauer would do in a situation like this? Feels like he would cut the wire, right? I feel like we should not cut the wire. It may just trap us in this room. So if we tip this vat over, we could just get out of the way, right? There's not how big is the vat compared to the room? Oh, uh, you could get out of the way. You wouldn't like be guaranteed to get your feet wet or any of that shit. You could totally just toss it can out. You see, Daryl peers in. Can you see anything inside the liquid? Why don't you roll perception? Oh, pay attention, Beth. Something in there. Pay attention, Beth. Yeah, <laughs> that's a thirteen plus. Three. That's a 16. Okay. Daryl, what do your Dilphi see? <laughs> <laughs> so you can see muscle tendons. Ooh. You can see a little bit of blood. You can see some veins, but they're all like detached from one another. It's um, like those Halloween buffet things. It's eyes. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's just a bunch of grapes. <laughs> and then can I lightly tug on the cable that's going into the vat? Just see if it's connected to anything. Just give it a light tug. Not that it would just yank it yeah, out. Yeah, if you give it a light tug, uh, you can tell that it is connected primarily to the console that's mounted to the um, vat. So the the settings, is it like to Terry Jr. or Terry Sr.? There's, you could switch it to either Terry Jr. and then hit the button, or you can switch it to Cherry Sr. and hit the button. And is it on either one of those? Right now, it's just in the dead center. Okay. Here's what I think, gentlemen. See, back in the 1990s, I had a uh, CD-ROM video game, a multimedia FMV video game, as I believe what the kids called it. And it was called Myst. Wasn't FMV, and but sure, Myst. Boy, oh boy, was it just a fantastic video game full of harebrained puzzles and all sorts of crazy stuff. And this kind of reminds me of that. When I was playing Myst, usually what I did was I just kind of poked at stuff and, you know, just fiddled with knobs and pushed buttons. And then you kind of got a sense of what they did. And then you, it would kind of slide together. So since this is the game room, this is probably the game. This is some big puzzle. And maybe if we get it right, like a, a guy made a meat will come out and help I us. Hear, I hear what you're saying, uh, Henry. The only thing I would say is that, like, this is like where he lives, right? 
So like this room is probably for something that he likes to do, <laughs> not like designed specifically for like if some dads were coming to save the That's day. That's true. That's one of the like, hallmarks of the environmental storytelling yeah, you it, missed was oftentimes you had to figure out <laughs> what was going on there. It wasn't just a puzzle. See, that's why it really <laughs> missed the There part were these two the brothers <laughs> that were in, trapped in books. <laughs> one liked blue pages, one liked red pages. It was very deep. They had a dad. And the red <laughs> was more of a pink. That was really. actually, yeah, Mrs. the Original Dungeons the original and Daddies Dungeons Adventure. And Daddies. Holy shit. All right, Henry. Well, we can go ahead and I, I, I kind of turn the dial over to uh, Terry Jr. I'm like, we can press the button and see what happens. I feel like we probably would rather have, wait, no, we don't want another Terry Jr. Here, right, Ron? Well, I feel like we kicked the shit out of Carrie Sr. before. Yeah. So listen, and I flex. Um, <laughs> we could probably take him again if, you know, pushing the button somehow reanimates these body parts to make it. Can't an be reanimation. Well, you can do anything you set your body parts to. I flip the dial to Terry Sr. Uh, all right. Well, I, mm, I, but we don't have a bag of holding. You just said you want to press all the buttons. I uh, push the button. You're sure? I push it. Okay. You all are level five, right? <laughs> Fuck's sake. Uh, no, because we didn't get a long rest. So, so we're you're level four. four. <laughs> we're four going on five. Was this a puzzle? Was the door open? <laughs> Daryl quickly like jiggles the handle to see if the door is open. No, the door does not open. Okay. So, okay. so you press the button and you can immediately hear some bubbling within the vat of brown liquid. If you're looking into the glass, you can see that the liquid itself begins to start taking form. Not only that, it starts to take multiple forms. Random goop becomes arms. Hunks of meat become hands with fingers and legs and bipedal humanoids, and you see seven bipedal humanoids. But the thing that really catches your eye as they begin to crawl out of the vat towards you is the face. Oh, the, the, shit. The face, I get it. The face morphs into not that of Terry Jr. and not that of Terry Sr., but of Ron <gasps> Stampler. And you hear Ron Stampler's voice coming from the mud men, all seven uh, Ron mud men saying, uh, uh, what, what do they say? They say something classic Ron. So, okay, I get it. This is like a video game, but the video game is how many Rons do you want to fight? And so for, on Terry Jr. difficulty mode, it's probably like one Ron. And on Terry Sr. mode, uh, it's like seven Rons because he's like Blade. So this was a difficulty mode selector. Uh, so as you say that, you might want to <laughs> roll initiative because the, <laughs> the first Ron goes, uh, uh, I don't know, Beth, what's a, what's a classic Ron thing that he would have said in front of Terry that Terry would have found irritating? I know what Ron would say, but I can't speak for these seven evil Rons. <laughs> yeah. I think I got to send it back to our DM, our all right. our genius of the hour, oh, our man God. coming up with all the villains and good guys. <laughs> it is Anthony Birch. <laughs> what does Ron say? So all the meat Rons go, I'm the dad that stepped up. I'm the dad that stepped up. <laughs> and they, they start crawling towards and one of them takes a swing at you. So now everybody roll initiative. I rolled a 22 initiative roll. I rolled a natural 20 for freaking, yeah, what's the point? I get to go first. So did they. <laughs> Wait, I get 20 plus one though, so I got 21. Okay, so you go first. Yes. Your initiative is now figured out. It's going to be Matt, then it's going to be all the baddies, then it's going to be uh, Beth, Freddy, and Will. Okay. okay. In, in whatever order you want for okay. that last three. Okay. There's seven of them. Mm-hmm. Are they all out of the vat already, or are they, some of them are kind of climbing out? They're climbing out of the vat. Can oh, we man. tip the vat tip over? Tip the vat, dude. Yeah. Tip yeah. The vat. Trap them in the vat. Drown these Rons. Drown, okay. <laughs> but, well, what, I, I could do that because one of them is literally swinging at Ron, right? Yeah, one sort of managed to crawl its way halfway out and then just sort of took a swing at Ron at the second he saw his face. Okay, I think in this case, uh, Daryl sprints and tries to push uh, Ron out of the way of the swing. Okay. And I swing my war cleaver at the clay Ron. Okay, so we'll just say for your movement that you just put yourself in How between. close do they look like Ron? Like, in the in the chaos of battle, is there a chance we may have mistaken <laughs> Ron with Clay Ron? No, because okay. the clay from the neck down is, like, not great at approximating clothing, so it's approximating the last thing that Terry Jr. saw Ron in, which was, like, I don't know, what does Ron wear on an average day at home? Polo shirt. Polo shirt. <laughs> yeah, okay. it doesn't have the, like, do you still, you don't still have the doodler shirt on or any of that stuff, do you? But No, just... Polo shirt. Oh, you're still wearing the same thing? Okay, then yeah, it is confusing. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> well, but it'll be like clay colored versus. Yeah, but it's like clay face where I'm, you can like. I'm you also know. wearing oh, okay. a clay color. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, very good. Um, I swing at the head. Okay. Ooh, Ward Cleaver will be good if they're enchanted. Yeah, right? go ahead and roll an yeah. attack. Please hit. Will a four hit? Uh, wow, no, not at all. <laughs> so the Ward Cleaver sizzles through the air. And just completely, utterly, with no chance of hitting him, whizzes right over his head. As I miss, <laughs> Daryl is incredibly upset at himself. He goes, fucking piece of shit, Daryl. And he enters rage mode. Um, so that way I can get some uh, strength and help myself from dying. Uh, against yourself? 
Rage oh, Against the Machine. I'm pretty angry. I'm pretty angry at myself right now for missing that. Oh but, my god, uh, it's, oh, it's, sad. It's, yeah, all men well, need therapy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Daryl definitely needs therapy. Um, uh, so does Matt. Uh, so, <laughs> um, for different reasons. And now all seven of them are going to go. The one. That you, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> the one that you swung at takes a swing back at you. The first bad boy hits you for nine damage. Okay, so I gain advantage on strength checks, saving throws, plus two melee damage with strength weapons, resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. What does resistance mean? Uh, it means that you take half damage from it, so you only take uh, four damage. All right. Hey. So half damage is going to be right? helping. Yeah, they're he punching. was punching, so that was bludgeoning. Yeah. All right. The second one is going to try to do the same thing. He misses. Third one. Critical fails. Accidentally punches another Ron mud man in the face and does Jesus Christ. So one of the automatons accidentally sees you and goes, huh, and then immediately punches the Ron right next to him and just decimates his face. His fist goes all the way through the clay of that other guy's face and it just fucking goes limp and then goes completely liquid and turns back into vat juice. So now Whoa. one of them is just dead just by pure bad luck. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, there's like a drain in the middle of the floor, right? Yeah. They gotta wash like this guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You now realize that the floor is a little bit inclined toward the center of the floor where, yeah, all the juice goes and goes into a drain. Now that's just bottom. good civil engineering. Engineering there, folks. <laughs> uh, now I think the fourth one misses. Jesus. Fifth one, Jesus. And the last one actually does hit you, thank Christ. The final run. The final run. The final run. Uh, run seven. The final run. <laughs> he only does two damage to you. Well, he did five, and you, you have resistance, so he only does two damage. So you basically have these two Rons just like beating, trying to beat the shit out of your fucking knees, while the other ones just go like, bleh, bleh, I'm Ron. I'm fucking incompetent. While they just completely <laughs> manage to miss you with every single other hit that, that they have. That sounded a lot like Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Ron has the transmutation cantrip, a thaumaturgy. So Ron's version is Daddy's Home, where uh, the enemy briefly hears the frightening voice of Ron's father. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so all of the Rons, including real Ron, the, the RR, oh, no. the double R, unfortunately hear, Oh, you're Ron. You're so incompetent. That's right. You're incompetent. You're so incompetent. I'm disappointed. All right. Why don't you roll intimidation with advantage? Does Ron self-intimidate by casting this spell? Nobody's more intimidated by Ron than Ron. <laughs> <gasps> Natural 20. Yeah, oh my God. Baby. So the two uh, Ron clay men that were attacking Daryl, you see their fists go back as if to hit him one more time. And then they hear the voice of your father and their fists just stop and their arms go slack and they just slowly like politely climb off of Daryl. And all of them, without even looking at each other, without even deciding it, they all just climb back <gasps> into the vat. <laughs> And then just like slowly while making maintaining eye contact with just you all slowly begin to sort of like melt as they begin to melt. One of them like extends a hand to Ron. Like, do you want to join us? Because this is we know how you feel because that's how we feel. <gasps> Next time, buddy. All right. All of them choose to melt. Anthony, I have a very important question. Yeah. Do any of the Rons do a Terminator thumbs up? Is, this <laughs> <one>? <laughs> is Ron cool enough to have watched the Terminator? <laughs> Ron, Ron gives them finger guns and he winks. <laughs> Good enough. So yeah, what, it, what you thought was just a bunch of clay and liquid, but then two fingers like come up out of it and two finger guns right back at you and then melt back down into the muck. And then the door behind you, ding, opens. And uh, that definitely gets advantage now because they got finger gun back by a dad. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's true. You have advantage on charisma checks and stuff. Nice. You know, this is actually like another one of those video games that we got one of the boys that was like a virtual console game is I think what they called it called Zelda. And in Zelda, they would have these rooms where you had to fight a bunch of goblins or, or wizards and then the room would unlock once it was done. So it is like the game room. You know, I think I'm starting to appreciate the design of this crazy old tower. Also, Ron, are you okay? That was really intense. You know, it's just a game. It's just a game. You know what, Ron? If you think about it, though, if this is where Terry's been living, like, at least in one way you could think is that, like, he has a machine where he could, like, hang out with you. He spends time with you, kind of. Yeah. And you're on his mind. Yeah, you know? you're on his mind. Yeah, and I'm on his floor, too. Yeah. <laughs> And clogging up his drains. Ugh. Well, let's uh, think about the philosophical implications of everything we just did later and yeah. <laughs> press on further into this dungeon. That's How a theme we? for this adventure, isn't it? 
as, as he walks, Daryl's kind of just like looking at the wire and kind of disappointed. Like nobody, nobody like gaff taped this thing or like kept it safe. Like it's kind of like hey, Daryl. This looks like an OSHA hazard. Yeah, it? this is like I don't care. Just a little bit of tape, a little bit of tack, a little like staples on the side of the thing. This thing could have been God. Somebody could trip over this. I, I like. This it. looks like Freddie's apartment when he's recording podcasts. <laughs> yeah. I like that this magic vat needed a wire to plug into the door. <laughs> Otherwise, how will you know that the bat and the door has something to do with each other? Otherwise, you'd be like, oh, here's a vat and here's a door that's locked for reasons I'll never understand. And then you die of starvation in this room. Damn, Anthony's a true daddy master game designer, guys. Take notes. Yeah, good job. Those hands in the middle. That was a good first room, everybody. Right, let's do a hands in the middle when we win. All right. Uh, okay. Why was it we lose, though? Yeah, oh, gosh, you're right, Daryl. All right, hands in the middle, hands everybody. In the middle. Doodlers. Right. One, two, three. Doodlers. One room down. Hopefully, just a few more to go. So you head up again, and now you are in a very large and ornate dining room with beautiful chandeliers on the top uh, coming from the ceiling. Terry's must have been working up an appetite kicking your ass, Ron. (laughs) And a very large, long gothic table with one chair at one end and one chair at another. And there's a very large chair with an ornate black wooden back with like fucking bats and demon stuff like carved into it. And then there's more humble, like cute, small chair on the other end. Uh, Carved like a gamer chair? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't thought about that way, but yeah, I feel like that's probably what he would have done. Is yeah, it looks like a fucking Razor Hyper X gamer chair, <laughs> but carved out of wood. Carved out of wood. <laughs> How many stairs have we gone up? Uh, you've gone up two floors. Two floors. Daryl Ron uh, is panting. Goes to the closest chair and just sits down and puts his leg up on the chair and goes, "Oh man, old football injury. This needs hurrying." Okay, so as you sit down into the chair without examining it at all, this <laughs> uh, uh, Beauty and the Beast ass room. Tired. <laughs> uh, you feel a sharp prick in the back of your neck. <laughs> oh shit! Tell me the happiest memory that Daryl has of his father. <gasps> Whoa! <laughs> oh, shit. Um, okay. The happiest memory Daryl has of his father is, uh, after his first day of, uh, peewee football, his dad wasn't there to pick him up from practice cause he was at, at work and, and Daryl was sad. And when he, uh, when his mom picked him up and he got home, Daryl's dad had rushed home and had a new football for him and a Jersey that said Daryl on it and said, Hey, you want to, sorry, I missed practice, but we can keep practicing if you want and open the door to bring him outside. Cool. You don't have that memory anymore. Oh my God. <laughs> so, so that that memory is siphoned oh from your mind and you feel it like leave through your neck and across the room you can see the other chair, this like gray glowing fluid just goes and like spurts it out of a, of a similar needle on the other chair, but it just sort of flaps around and all the liquid just goes on the table and begins to evaporate. And you can see within the vapor, that was the memory of that you had that you no longer have. But he has it now because he just saw it, the memory. No, he saw it disappear and now he doesn't understand what it was. Oh, Hey, um, hey, Daryl, can I sit on that seat? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man, uh, it's weird. This chair, like, I felt my knees hurting, but I felt like a little prick in my neck, and uh, I don't really know how to explain it, but I think it I think it took something from me, and then it spit out. Do you guys see that? Yeah, I, it just looked like a bunch of gray goo, and then, like, something about a football. That was just intuitively, it just kind of, I felt a football when I looked at it. I, I don't know how to explain this. And Matt could explain it as he's figured out the puzzle, he thinks. But da- me, Daryl, I don't know how to explain it, but it feels like this chair took something from me. And it feels you know, like that chair spit it out. You know, that's interesting because the kids mentioned that Terry Sr., when they he drank their blood, he took something else from them. And I wonder if it's the same thing. Oh. And maybe this is like the room where he does that kind of thing. It's definitely seems like this is a kid chair and that's like a big boy chair over there. This, you know sorry, what I mean? Henry. This is a gamer chair, <laughs> and that over there appears to be how, some kind much, of adult chair. How much did it hurt? It, it was just emotional damage. Okay, so you don't have to take. I'm, like, I'm playing it like that. That devastated Matt, the player, but I'm playing it since he just lost the memory. I feel like Daryl doesn't know. It's like it's like in uh, Doctor Who when the memory's gone. It's just it's just gone. It's yeah. just gone. So yeah. he doesn't know it what can't, happened. It, he can't feel the hurt because he didn't. Actually, he doesn't remember. Doesn't it. realize what happened. I don't know, guys. Like Ron, yeah, you want to try it? Something. This chair did something weird. It, like I felt a little prick, and then the, the guys. I don't know if we whoa, should whoa. be trying unclean needles in a vampire's castle. I'm just saying. I'm just guys. saying my knee feels better, too. <laughs> Whoa, interesting. I'm just saying my knee feels better. Is and- there a door in this room? Is yeah, there's just, I mean, there's just a staircase headed up. I was literally going to explain before you just sat in the chair, but there's just like, <laughs> you could just go up the next flight of stairs. There's nothing stopping you. There's another flight of stairs at the end of the room. On the I'm going to go it. ahead and inspect the room with a perception roll to ahead. see if there's any goodies that Anthony is hiding from I us. I mean, there are goodies. There's a, there's a chair that gets rid of my most precious memories. 
I got a 23. 23, my goodness. With a 23, you can tell that there is a small button on one of the um, armrests of the adult chair Mm -hmm. that uh, looks like it's connected to, you feel like it's magically connected, not with a wire. A psychic Be- wire. Because that's more immersive. <laughs> Thank you, Anthony. I couldn't believe it before, but now I'm fully bought in. There's a button there, and you, with your 23, you can tell that pressing it is not going to be dangerous. That is probably fine. Hey, guys, I'm going to press this button. All right, do what you want, man. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good in this chair. Okay. Can not that I, I need a rest or anything. I feel fine. I just, you know, old can football I at injury. Can least sit in the other chair? Uh, yeah, I guess if you want to take a load off, Ron, take a load off. Just be careful about your neck because th- that thing did something to his neck. And, you know, seems like maybe a vampire thing. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm, well, well, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to lean forward and I'm going to be like, pass the butter. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to press this button and see what happens. I'm real curious. So I press the button. Okay, so you press the button, and from the center of the table, a panel opens up, and you see a small row of, like, ten books sort of lift out along with a couple of goblets and some uh, pretty delicious-looking food, food that looks like it was just baked uh, or just cooked or whatever. All the books are there except for one in the middle, which is missing. And you can see that the book to the left of the open space is called Anatomy of Creatures Great and Small. And then the book to the right of the empty space is called Attack of the Goblin King. But other than that, there's like big old turkey legs and grapes and and drinks. and. Anthony, is this, are we playing by final fight rules? Will eating a turkey leg give me some health back? You can find out. Uh, I want to take a big old sniff of that. I, I no, Glenn, don't eat yeah, the food. This is vampire food. He already did it. No, I'm just, I'm taking a big old sniff of it. Oh, okay. oh you're going to sniff. Oh, yeah. Just, I'm like a feral animal. I'm going to check and smell it before I eat it. <laughs> and that's a 19 perception. Uh, with your 19 perception, you can tell that it is delicious. It is magically formed. Like it's not actually going to give you a whole lot of nutritional value because it's just basically just conjured out of it's the- It's like processed food, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's processed food. It's like Dunkaroos. <laughs> it's a yeah, Lunchables. You tell, you, it tastes like turkey, but it is essentially no different than Dunkaroos, and that is, that is canon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm disappointed by this. Yeah, but it's not going to hurt you. Daryl gets up and is like, I guess we should just leave this room, guys. Well, hang on. I want to <laughs> check out some of these neato books, you know? I- yeah, I just didn't expect that while we were in this fancy world with, like, swords and axes, there'd be so much reading. <laughs> But, all right, I get it. Like, yeah, let's read some books. I just, now, the well, third kind of time book? I've attempted to hand you a way out of this situation you found yourself in. What kind of book would be between attack and anatomy? The remaining books are, you see a cookbook, you see a potion book, you see a book about making poisons, you see a book about how to father-son bond, you see... Ooh, uh, let's a, take that one. Yep. Yeah, all I right. think, could I just... Yeah, I'm just going to... You want to hold that one, Yeah, Ron? I'm going to hold it. All right, Do cool. you open it up? Yeah. Okay, so it's a book called The Bond Between Father and Son. And when you open it up, you see that it is, rather than being a psychology book, it's like a how-to book. And it basically describes the way that one can use love of one's father as a uh, sustenance, essentially, that you can, like, vampirically suck away somebody's love uh, and that that is a better form of sustenance than, like, blood. It's basically written by and for vampires. It does feel like that's probably why he was disguised i would I, again i believe he was disguised as terry senior and that was the way he was getting the love from terry jr is to pretend to be terry senior and getting all that love and staying alive for a long time mm. well if he was an emotional vampire could i maybe be a, an emotional werewolf what, well, I don't well, know what that just, how about you just can be an emotional dad that Terry Jr. needs instead of a vampire. You don't want to be a vampire. Vampires are bad things. Well, he's saying oh, werewolves. Really yeah, but werewolves hard. are also bad. <laughs> it is hard, Ron. It is hard. I will try that, but I will also be an emotional werewolf where once a month I just howl. <laughs> you can do that. That's great. Just don't be worried like you're only an emotional father like once a month. That's what I would think an emotional werewolf is. True, but, you know, I just want to howl sometimes. You want to howl right now? Yeah. <laughs> you howl your heart out, buddy. Okay. Terry, I don't know if you can hear me in this tower, but I love you. From beneath you, you hear Peyton be like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Is that, are you okay? Yeah, we're good, Peyton. Henry wipes a tear from his eye. It's a beautiful <laughs> display of Ron's love. I think we should press forward, gentlemen. Each room is more interesting and more intriguing than the last. Who knows what we'll find on the next level of Anthony's dungeon? (laughs) All right. Daryl stands up and cracks his knee. Let's do this thing. 
So as you do, you hear this as, as the needle <laughs> leaves your neck. We, this, this room didn't deserve, we don't need a hands in the middle for this room. Right? <laughs> Feels like we just looked at some fake food and grabbed a book. You walk up the flight of stairs to the next room. And in this room, you see another flight of stairs heading up one more level. And then you see a door, one might say an optional door on the left, uh, <laughs> with a lion's face sort of carved into it out of stone and the word open carved into its forehead. And one of the mocking bats uh, that you heard in the foyer sits on the nose of the lion and says, Oh, welcome, welcome. Remember, only opens this door if you have grown tired of leaving, if you have uh, lost everything that makes you you and you wish to end it all. Otherwise, stay away from this door. Stay away. And the, the bat flies away. And uh, yeah. <laughs> I had some follow-up questions for that bat. <laughs> Basically, after the bat flies away, the lion's face on the door goes, mm, bonjour. And you see that it begins to move and like it's an animate like face in this door. Oh, is this where he keeps his porn? Is this just the porn room? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, guys, this is just going to be his dirty porn room with all of his no, like no, 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 no. This is his porn room, 100%. This is where he keeps his porn house. When I play uh, the few video games that Grant lets me play, I usually just kind of, I only have so much time, so I just go straight through the dungeon. And then like maybe if I'm going to do like a new game plus or something, I might go to the optional paths. You're telling me Daryl Wilson knows new game plus? <laughs> it sounds to me, Daryl, like you play a little bit more video games than you let on. And no. it's okay if you play video games. So you don't have to like couch it behind your son. Yeah, like, games Mad are fun. Like, like Madden. I don't remember Madden having a new game plus. That FIFA you know, doesn't have a new game plus. So are we gonna open this door or what? Well, we're gonna get back to the that conversation. But um, <laughs> hi, is this, this does the lion talk? Is Mr. Lion? Uh, we uh, we got back there. Mm, Parlez le mot de piss. Say that piss. again in English. See? Piss. Parlez le mot de piss. Um, piss, speak the little, speak a little piss, speak a little. <laughs> Do you know English? No, 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 no. This is the porno room. I'm telling you guys, it's the piss and shit. And these guys, Terry uh, Senior vampires into some weirdo shit. Parlé sur le mot français. Hey guys, does anyone know anybody who speaks French? Anybody know French? Like we could call him. <laughs> um, oh, Ron knows Beth who took, uh, <laughs> 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 who took and failed <laughs> and failed French too in sophomore year of high school. <laughs> But Beth playing Ron didn't know the answer right now, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if you want to say that at some point when you, Beth and Ron were hanging out, that Beth like gave him some very remedial French, you can. It's up to you. <laughs> but Beth, who I am right now, knows <laughs> no French. Oh, well, then never the mind. Then you fuck that. <laughs> yeah. But you calling Beth would be you talking to Anthony playing Beth. Yeah. So, but Anthony you did Beth. just let Anthony know that, that you, you don't, don't speak know any French. French. Yeah. I let like, Anthony it's know turtles that all the I way failed down. French two, <laughs> but I did pass French one. Okay, so you can count. <laughs> what, have you guys got like Google Translate on your phone or something like Jeep? I got no. I got no. I got. I got Snake. That's all I got. Oh, okay. So Henry has an older iPhone, but it does have Siri. The screen's cracked, but <laughs> maybe what we can do is have. Can Siri translate? Like if I say, "Hey." I think I feel like it's you get to roll and you get to pull your phone out and try it. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to try to translate what Anthony says in French via the French. By French. <laughs> French. Okay. First, take out your phone, turn it on, and then roll to see if it shuts off or not. Oh, no. Where's he at now? You got to get higher than a three. I got a 15. Perfect. <laughs> Will is taking off his headphones and walking across the room with his phone. Mr. Door, what is behind you? Hey, Siri, translate this. Okay. What would you like to translate? Je n'ai plus pas de bière. Jeannette qui a bu une bière. So guys, get ready to have your minds blown. According to Siri, he just said that Jeannette who had a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, beers in there? I think there's beer in there. And some woman named Jeannette. Jeannette. <laughs> Jeannette. Oh, dear. Ron takes out his phone. Get higher than a three. 20. Nice. <laughs> just wasting them 20s. Well, with the 20, it's going to stay at exactly level yeah. it was. You don't have to get a four now. You just do a three. Ron is going to call his, his friend and his creator, Beth May in Los Angeles. <laughs> Wait, now, really quick. Beth is Ron's mom, right? Canonically, or are we just saying? It's not that Beth is Ron's mom. It's that she made him. I see. Okay. She made him who he is. Don't overthink yeah. it. Yeah. I got, you. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're more than friends, less than lovers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if only you knew how true it was. <laughs> At <right>. least so far. <laughs> hey, what's up? Hey, Beth. It's Ron. Hey, Ron. What's going on? 
I know that you were quite the C student in high school, <laughs> and that's better than I got. So I was wondering if I could get a little advice about the French language. Ooh, I only know un peu of French, but yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> he said a that poo. That means a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it means a little bit. See, you're, be- you're better than I thought. Um, could you translate this? Actually, uh, let me just ask um, this lion door. It's a long story. One, yeah, I mean, I'll just go with it. Yeah, no, that's what you do. Um, <laughs> Pretty unflappable. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You get so nervous sometimes. Yeah, but like, I'll roll with it. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Oh, you're so fun. Anyway, (laughs) let me just ask this door what to say, and then I'll say it into the phone for you. Hey, Mr. Door Lion. um, (laughs) We. This is insane. um, What did you just say to Henry? (laughs) Jadit ke jene pu patetir. And you hear Beth go, Oh, that's somebody with a horrible French accent saying, I said I can't tell you. (laughs) Oh. I want to kill myself. (laughs) Well, then it sounds oh, like you should so open the door. Yeah, you're ready to go through the <laughs> yeah. door. All right, Henry. All right. I, Henry's had quite enough of this. The, the door sees how frustrated you all are getting, and it says, J'ai besoin du mot de passe. You hear Beth say, So, j'ai besoin du means I need. So, mot de passe. What does mot de passe mean? I don't know. They didn't teach me that in French one. Dust? Like a dust can mot? I, hey, hey uh, Ron, uh, can I talk pass. to Beth? Yeah, please do. I grab the phone. Hey, Beth, I, I don't really know you, but you... you Who is you, this? This is, uh, hey, this is Daryl. Daryl Wilson, nice to meet you. Hey, nice, uh, I guess nice to meet you. How yeah, you know? sorry, we're just, uh, you do have a computer in front of you, right? Could you just quickly check that for us on Google Translate or something? Uh, sure, yeah. Canonically, Beth's Firefox is accidentally set to search Yahoo. And so- <laughs> 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 All right, I'm going to go into Yahoo and see if I can... <laughs> Wait, is there Yahoo Translate? No, no, there's Bing Microsoft Translator, though. All right, I'm, I, I Googled Bing Microsoft Translator. <laughs> you Googled Bing. That's very good. So, yeah, this works. So, Beth goes like, yeah, you know how much I love to use Bing. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too. So, uh, yeah, it looks like mot de pass means password. So, I guess it was saying uh, speak the password. Oh, hey, everybody, it needs a password. The door needs a password. Uh, I tossed the phone back to Ron. Okay, um... Well, Beth, it looks like, um, I mean, we could chat for another half hour. Or so. I w- I'm always happy to talk to you, my friend who is more than a friend and less than a lover. <laughs> so far, wink, wink. So, uh, oh, oh, oh you, <laughs> I like the way you're thinking, Ron. Yeah. Although I'm not really in a place where I feel like that's something I want. I know but, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want it and you don't need it. No, I don't. I'm enough on my own. You are. <laughs> you're more than that. <laughs> I just wish you so much happiness, and I think that you can get through this, whatever I I this can. is. I absolutely can, and all okay. my friends feel the same way about me. That's great, Beth. Anyway, um, have a good night. Yep. Um, yep. I'm going to go uh, uh, talk to some people who uh, message all the other Dungeons and Daddies guys and say how much they love Beth. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> Um, sounds great. <laughs> Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. <laughs> Whoa. So, uh, I mean, okay. So the, <laughs> the door needs a password. And what's it say up top again? It says uh, the word "open" is written on it in the in the forehead <gasps> of the lion. What's the French word for "open"? So, uh, uh, Henry says, "You know what? I'll, I'll talk to my good friend Siri. I think she can crack this one for us." Hey Siri, what's the French word for "open"? In French, "open" is pour ouvrir. So as the phone says that, the line goes, multi pass accepté. And its <laughs> its mouth opens. It gets wider and wider and wider until eventually it's the size of like a full like doorway. Um, and you can see beyond it into the next room. And in the next room behind it is a pressure plate in front of a door. We, we faced one of these before, didn't we? We, we saw a little pressure plate saw action. A pressure plate. So first of all, hey, great teamwork, everyone. Getting yeah, that door open. Yeah. yeah. Thanks that, to technology obviating any puzzle that a dungeon master can throw at us. <laughs> Rhonda, Beth, uh, ladies, helped us twice now. She has. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Right. Should we hey, check wait, out? I got an idea. We could like grab some of the books from downstairs and throw them on the pressure plate. Oh, good idea. Good idea. Good idea. I should have seen that coming. We, we do go that. grab all the books and then. And, a, and a turkey leg for just in case it needs like capacitive touch. So, uh, <laughs> so, so Glenn, you want to just... <laughs> Freddie warms up it. the turkey leg. <laughs> so, Glenn, you want to toss those books on one at a time from a safe distance? Yeah, let's do the old tossing books onto a pressure plate <laughs> trick that we've done in the past. Okay. You, you, I mean, yeah. You As you enter the room, you see like, oh, there's a hole in the door. 
that like is pointed at like where you might stand on the pressure plate and then you throw a book on the pressure plate and the door just opens. There's a mocking bat in that room that before it can even finish what it's saying because you just throw the book on it, it goes like, don't step on the pressure plate. This is a puzzle. Is, am I telling the truth or not? Ooh, who knows? And then, you, <laughs> <laughs> and then you throw a book on it and the door just opens. And then behind it is another, is an almost identical room with another pressure plate. And the bat says, oh, do step on the on the, the pressure plate with this one. Am I lying on telling me the truth? Who knows? Glenn throws a few more books on there. Well, the right. first one said, don't do it. Oh, fuck but it. it could be a double bluff. Yeah, whatever. I don't like to overthink <laughs> this sort of books. stuff. I'm going to chuck some books on it. Ron leads forward toward the pressure plate and says, everyone's counting on you. <laughs> 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 There's some extra pressure on there. <laughs> so the statement of pressure and the book land on it and the door just opens again. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder which one of it did that. And then behind that, there's a third room. And this one, the bat says, like, mm, who knows what to do with this one? <laughs> who knows? It could be anything. <laughs> Ron leans forward and says, should we get married? <laughs> <laughs> Where is this going between us? Hey, pressure plate, what are we? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll just chuck another book on it. The door just opens. <laughs> and then you see uh, this final room where there is a book surrounded Full by a dirty ring pictures. of fire. No, yeah, it's, well, okay. Yeah, on the ground you see some porn. Like, I knew it. I knew it, guys. I knew it. It's clearly not the focus of the room, though, because in the Wait, center is of the it, room... is it vampire porn? Yeah. yeah. sort of porn is Whoa. it? Whoa. It's just, it's just people <laughs> consensually biting each other. Vampire porn is probably just like a lot of photos from the Red Cross, like giving blood and it's stuff. Like... It's like people lying there and like getting their blood Yeah, it's people donating blood. It's like somebody with it's a running like an nose. angel comic book. <laughs> yeah, it's just angels. It's just pictures of David Boreanaz. So yeah, in the center of the room, there is a, a little podium with a book on it that's surrounded by a ring of fire. And a mocking bat in this room says, uh, remember, this is only if you wish to commit suicide, you will finally know the secrets of how to kill a vampire. This entire room was constructed before Anthony thought you would kill the boss before entering the tower in the first place. <laughs> Whoops. Well, we already learned how to kill a vampire, everybody. Yeah, I would be pretty impressed if it said put a bag over its head and cut the bag. If you guys don't mind, though, we could probably take a few extra seconds to kind of destroy some of the smut, and I start picking up... <laughs> And I pick up some. I pick up a handful of the magazine. I toss them in the fire. All right. Um, All right. I just keep doing that until people stop me. <laughs> right, Ron <laughs> saves one Red Cross flyer. While Daryl's doing it, he slips one of the magazines. Roll sleight of hand. Come on, David Blaine. Show us what you got. I got a fourteen. Can I roll an opposing perception check? Yeah, everybody roll a opposing perception. Were people watching me as I was picking up the... You're the only person doing anything in the room. I guess that would be a passive perception, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so what's your passive perceptions, everybody? I have a 20 passive perception. Oh, well, then you definitely noticed. Um, I got 11. I didn't see shit. I have a 13. So only Henry Oak saw it. And I, I, I let it go. Do I, do you like? No. Okay, you I, don't, don't, I don't even know that you look at me. Do you know that he knows? I want a <laughs> counter I mean. passive perception check. <laughs> Does he know that you know that he knows? d and is really great, guys. <laughs> Daryl takes a step away, and then he feels guilty, and he takes out his pocket and throws it in the fire. <laughs> Wow, that was a lot. Do we you know? know? <laughs> you had a whole three-act arc do we, there. Do we know that he threw in the fire? <laughs> I think we should take this book, guys. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, there might be some interesting vampire facts in there. I didn't take any book. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I meant the book in the fire, not the, the porn that you destroyed. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Let's take the book. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Okay. So as you reach toward the book, you can tell that it'll hurt a little bit if you take it. So you'll take a D4 of damage if you take I'm the book. I'm going to throw one of the other books onto it, like try to knock it off. <laughs> so like, like a, sort of like a high impact Indiana oh, like, Jones replacing the idol. <laughs> like a carnival like a, game. Like, a, like a, hey, I played a little ultimate in college, guys. I, I bet you I got this one. Yeah, all go right. for it, Glenn. Baby, that's a natural twenty. <laughs> These the dice third. are loaded. Matt, check that dice. <laughs> I'm not touching it. Take a look, Matt. I, I trust him. I don't want to get up. <laughs> <laughs> that knee. All right. So <laughs> you throw a fucking uh, potion how-to book perfectly, and like it right through the ring of fire, and hits it right out of the ring of fire perfectly, and and takes its original spot. If there were any uh, pressure traps, which there were, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they they don't trigger. <laughs> Nothing triggers. <laughs> and yeah, you you now have a book that teaches you how to kill vampires. Yeah, see guys? Who said the ultimate frizzy would ever pay off? Huh? <laughs> Nobody. I'll love, add that to the collection. I love throwing of disc, man. Nice throw I put out I put out for a I, fist pound. I dap that fist with my Boom. fist. Uh, let's, I'll add to our book collection and let's, <laughs> let's move on. Okay. 
So uh, you head up into another room, and uh, you can see that, again, at the end of the room, there's another stairway if you want to just skip this room, and you can see some daylight streaking in through the top. You can tell that whatever the next room is, that's going to be the last room in this tower. And in this room, you see that this is a bedroom. It's got nice, soft carpeting, really soft, tasteful lighting on, like, the candlelight and shit like that. And there's a small bed at one end of the room, and at the other end of the room, a pretty large coffin. Daryl sits down in the bed, and his knee's really hurting me. All right. Ron sits down in the coffin. <laughs> okay, so uh, as you sit down in the bed, it's just comfy. It seems like nice. a normal-ass bed. Nothing special about it. As you sit down in the coffin, you immediately smell something really rank. Why don't you roll perception? A two. All right. So you just smell something really bad. Oh, Ron. It wasn't me. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take a closer look at this coffin, gentlemen. Why don't you, you roll perception or, or investigation? Uh, six plus five, 11. With 11, you can feel a slight draft coming from uh, uh, the coffin. The coffin? Yeah. There's something up with this coffin. It's like windy and stinky. I think there's like a magical fart trapped in this coffin. (laughs) (laughs) I take a look at the room and I'm like, wait a minute. There's nowhere for this guy to poop. We've gone through all the floors of this damn castle. And there hasn't been a single bathroom. Did you guys see a bathroom in there? You think he poops in this coffin? I don't know. Probably not the bed, right? That's so. not the bed. The coffin's the only... I bet you he poops in there. What about that poop-colored, you know, the, the liquid? Yeah. That's where he keeps oh. his Rons. Oh. <laughs> but, it, I mean, it does seem like the sort of Ron guy that would... Ron poop? What's the difference? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to... I open the coffin lid. Okay, so the coffin is empty completely. Mm-hmm. He flushed recently. And you notice that the smell doesn't get any stronger when you open the coffin. Can I do another perception roll? Yeah, sure. Okay. Why not? Uh, 18. Okay, with an 18. So the coffin is on the, uh, I, I probably should have mentioned earlier, the coffin is like on the ground. It's not like a standing up, like walk mm-hmm. out vampire Dracula coffin. It's just like laying on the ground. And with an 18, you can feel the draft is coming from beneath the coffin. Oh, guys, help me move this coffin. All right, let's push this coffin. But be careful. Stay on the edges of the coffin because there could be like a booby trap underneath this thing and I don't want anyone falling into it. So stay on opposite. You Okay, Glenn and Ron, you take that end of the coffin. Me and Daryl are going to take this end of the coffin. On three, lift with your Wait, legs. I not- want the other end of the coffin. Okay, you can take the other end of the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> lift with your knees and not with your back. Lift with your back in a jerking, twisting motion. <laughs> I'll lift with my back. Thank you very much. My I, knees I, really I, killing I, me. I, I, yeah, I still... I, I get in you- perfect squat position. <laughs> This man's carried a lot of amps in his day, I Listen, can tell. Listen, guys, as a man on the road, you throw your back out once, it'll screw up your whole Christmas tour, guys. You got to lift with your legs. All Not right. with your knees. All right. You'll lift with your knees. All right. Daryl and uh, Ron roll constitution. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a four plus one, so that's five. I got plus three on constitution, and I rolled a 19, so 22. Oh, wow. Okay, so your back is ironclad, apparently. Uh, Beth, you take a D4 oh, of damage square dancing. for throwing out your back. <laughs> Two. Okay. Ooh, what does uh, Ron's back hurt? Dad sound sound like? <laughs> <laughs> Daryl nods. Sorry, buddy. Okay, so you all successfully move the coffin aside, and underneath the coffin, you see that there is basically a little alcove that's been dug out, and within the alcove is uh, the corpse that you can immediately rec- recognize, Ron, from the pictures that Samantha told you, the body of Terry Sr. It is human. It is not as decomposed as it probably should be, given how long you know he's been dead, but you can immediately recognize that this is the human corpse of, uh, of Terry Sr., God, that's so scary. Gonna give me a heart attack. Oh, man. I am so glad I did not poop in this coffin. (laughs) We're not dead, and we didn't kill Terry Sr. I feel like this has been a win. This is a win overall, everyone. Yep. I'm gonna spitball something, and this is sometimes as four dad adventurers in another realm who are trying to rescue their sons, you need a safe space to pitch something crazy, to talk about something that could be weird, but I just gotta get it out there just a sanity check. It seems to me... If we could convince Terry Jr. that his real dad actually is dead, then maybe some of this emotional trauma would go away. Unfortunately, it does seem like the only way to convince him that his dad is dead would be to show him his dead dad. (laughs) Yeah. Or... What if we did some sort of skinwalker routine? Mm, No. (laughs) No, no, Ron. Ron. um, Anyways, with this body here, should we say a few words or something? I think we should. Ron, would you like to do that? Sure. Um, dear Terry Sr., the real Terry Sr., who is not a vampire, but is still dead. Um, I, 
like your wife, your ex-wife very much, and your ex-son very much too. You were very lucky to have them, and um, I guess they were lucky to have you, but I, I just... Listen, bud, you're dead, and I'm alive, so um, in conclusion, I win... Uh, rest your soul. <laughs> that, was go- that, that was great, Ron. Um, Thanks. I have an idea. Is it just to do the reasonable thing and bring Terry Jr. down here and talk through it? Yeah, so here's what I think. Okay. I think we have a coffin. You know, when, okay. when one of my beautiful boys, Lark and Sparrow, uh, when, their, when their grandma, oh. uh, Grandma Bin Bin, died... Um, it's a long story. It's very cute, but that's what they called her. Uh, one of the things that helped them get closure was when we went to the funeral and we, with you know, they had the body in the casket, and that's you know, that's a way that people can kind of can kind of move on. So, ah, so we take Terry Junior down here, show him the casket, and he's like, "Oh, I don't believe that. I'm still mad at you, Ron." But then we do a pop goes the weasel, and inside is <laughs> is Terry Senior's body, and he's like, "You were right. You were right all along. I love you, and I appreciate you, and I I'm glad that you're my stepdad." Uh, um, that, that's that's halfway there. I just don't. I don't feel like we need to surprise him. I feel like you kind of want to lead. You want him to kind of go at his own pace with it because yeah. this okay. is going to be very hard for him. Yeah, Ron, this is going to be. You're going to need to step up more than you've ever stepped up before. Sidebar: How fucked up does this corpse look? Uh, it's definitely fucked up enough that it is recognizable as Terry Senior. So it would prove your point, but it would also this isn't like a oh they made it all nice for the no. This okay. is definitely not going to. Uh, it it hmm. will probably exacerbate I, his I mental issues. We, but uh, just taking a look at the decomposed corpse here, I don't think anyone, especially not this corpse's son, would ever want to see this guy. This look, I know this is uncomfortable, but death is an uncomfortable thing. Like. He lost his, his father. He doesn't believe his father's dead. It's going to be rough, too. He's going to be reliving this, but he's doing that anyways. And if seeing the corpse is going to be the only way that this kid can accept it, that's going to be... Look, these these things happen. Dog, this corpse is so mangled, though. Yeah, it's 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 a, it's a dead body. It's not going to be great. You know what? He's not... That's Dog, not going to be That's an thing. image that he's not going to be able to forget, man. You can't do that, dude. That's so uncool. Do you think that maybe it, it might be a little better than the image of us decapitating a, a healthy live one? It's too late for that one yeah so because terry has taken such emotional trauma over the last like couple sessions this conversation with him is going to be kind of like a persuasion boss fight so rather than just rolling once you're going to have to see if you can get a certain number of victories of persuasion before you get a certain number of losses and some things you'll do will give you advantage and some things will give you disadvantage Mm. um so you can go in with multiple strategies you want to there doesn't necessarily have to be one it's not gonna be a straight you win you lose but um yeah some things will definitely do more like emotional he has like emotional hp and emotional like progress in terms of getting him onto your side okay first of all i think we should move the body from the pit into the coffin or the bed Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but good on you for thinking ron you know to how about how to make it better so i think we move the body into the coffin i think we go up there and i think we have an honest put the lime in the (laughs) (laughs) coffin. i think we go up there and we just have to have a talk with this young man no we we don't move it of course we don't move it. We leave this as it is. We need to tell him what this awful yes. guy yeah, did. Yeah. And you're going to have to be ready for him to want to. Look, when I found out that my father died, the first thing I want to do was see his body. So you're just going to be ready for him to want to see this corpse. It's not a decision for us, ultimately, everybody. Sometimes a boy just wants to see a corpse. That's not what he wants to see. It may be what he needs to see, Ron. Okay, and you're sure that we shouldn't put the body in a place that's a little bit more respectful and less traumatic than being in the hole we found him in? No, because the whole point here is we need to get him away from whatever this other Terry vampire guy did. He's been lying to him. This guy's been lying to him, saying that he's his dad. We need to show how awful he is here, but we can't, again, touch a crime scene. (laughs) Um, guys, well, maybe knowing that it will be really hard for Terry to see this, like, really messed up body, maybe 
I'm not stepping up to convince him that it's real, but I got to step up to just be there for him after he sees it. Cause it's, it's pretty fucked up and I, I might need to talk to somebody too, but, um, if there's a way that he will believe it without having to see the corpse, that's ideal. Again, we can bring him down here and explain what's happened and hopefully he'll not want to see it. But that feels like a last resort. The he corpse will, is a last resort. But if resort. he wants to see it, we can't be pressuring him not to see it. He's going to, he may, it is his father. It is his right to look at it if he wants to and if that's the only thing that's going to get him past this delusion and the lies that he's been told then that's what it's going to be and it's going to be hard to you're going to have to be there for him ron after he sees it i understand all of that i'm just my only thing is do we want to put the corpse in the coffin just so that it's not i mean it's one thing to see your parent dead it you know it's another thing to have to see them dead in the context of the crime scene that you found them in ron, ron what do you want to do because it's your reaches, play you're the quarterback ron reaches for the body oh boy uh, Henry goes to help Ron hey, with the body. Hey there, buddy. Glenn is like, my fingerprints are not touching this. My fingerprints are nowhere near here. Hey there, buddy. Let's straighten out this mummified shirt of yours. There, you look much better. And then uh, Ron tries to put him in the coffin. I'm going to help Ron put right. him in the coffin. He's light enough that it is no problem. You, you definitely, you just put him in the coffin easily. I'm heavier than this guy, by the way. <laughs> I think I look a little bit better, too. Um, oh let's see. All right. But we should close the coffin before we go upstairs. I'm going to put that on the table. Just also remember that the last thing he saw in this coffin was a guy that looked just like Terry Sr. But hey, you know, don't listen to Daryl. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, you put in the coffin. Let's, oh, uh, I see what I, shit. I, would... <laughs> I, see, I see your point. But then we, I mean, I'm genuinely at a loss here. It's Ron, it's your call. Ron wants to do it this way. We're going to do yep. it Ron's way. Um... Does anybody have sunglasses we could put on <laughs> or something? Daryl, Daryl has sunglasses. Daryl has sunglasses. Daryl, can I have your sunglasses? No, Ron. We're not. We're not putting sunglasses <laughs> no, on the corpse. Should we go uh, talk to? Should we go talk to Terry Junior? I think we should go talk to Terry Junior. All right. Bye, Terry Senior. We'll see you soon. We're gonna uh, cover the coffin, though. Yeah, right? we put the clothes. Yeah, that's why I'm saying goodbye to him. I take the business card that says you're welcome and I put it in his front pocket. What? Uh, no, no, you no, shouldn't no, do that. I go to grab it. Don't put the business card in the corpse <laughs> like you're like you're a serial killer and you're leaving <laughs> your, your calling card there, Ron. I take more of my business cards out. But <laughs> Um, All right, Daryl. Daryl's exacerbated. He just lays down the bed. He's like, "I'm trying to help you. You know what? You guys do what you need to do." I I lean toward the corpse and I say, "Hey, Terry, help me be a good father. I mean, stepfather, because I got to step up pretty hard right now." All right, are you gonna head upstairs? Yeah. Okay. So you head upstairs and you are at the top of the tower. You see a uh, balcony, basically, that Terry Jr. is standing on inside a sort of runic circle with pentagram and a bunch of weird sigils and shit. Wind is completely localized to him blowing his hair back or whatever. And he's reading from a book that's called The Astral Plane and You. And he's like, tr <laughs> he's like trying to like ah, do yes. sigils in the air with his fucking fingers and shit like that. And uh, next to him off the balcony, you see a little toilet seat. That's where they shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> oh my god <laughs> but the thing that grabs your eye the most is terry jr trying to uh to cast some spells to get oh. to the astral plane oh that's really bad hey hey terry um it's me ron just um what you doing there kiddo so are you walking toward him or are you just saying it from your distance i'm saying it from a distance so he he looks up at you and he just goes and grunts and just looks back and starts flipping through the book even more hurriedly I'm like come on come on come on i start walking toward him hey if you need any tutoring or anything um that is something i learned um to do so as you get closer you see that the runic sigils at his feet light up and you're stopped by an invisible sort of wall of force Wow, that's some algebra I never passed, so maybe I can't tutor you on that. Um, anyways, can I get past this force field, please, Terry? He tries to squint and, like, squeeze your voice out of his head, but he can't. And he just goes, no, Ron, please, for the last time, just leave. But, Terry, I'm here. Yeah, that's the problem. That's well, always been the problem. Are you not getting that? I get it just fine, but I... I love you too much to leave. That does a little bit of uh, damage to his resolve. That's good. So he goes, I appreciate that, but I'm, I, I, you do. I know what I need and what I need is not you. What I need, I had, 
and then he left, and then he came back, and then you cut off his head, so I'm going to go find his head, and I'm going to have my dad back. Well, it sounds like you still don't have what you need, and I don't think you're going to find what you need in the astral plane either. Well, this book says otherwise. Well, what does it say? I'm not a tutor. <laughs> it says all I got to do is go to the astral plane. If I can just finish this spell, which would be a lot easier if you weren't around, I just got to concentrate, then I can go to the astral plane, and once you're there, uh, time doesn't move in the same way, so I could just be with him for, for all time, and it would be great. Terry, can I ask you something? Um, what what did you like about your dad? What did I like about him? Jesus Christ. He was my dad. He wasn't he wasn't trying really hard to just sort of be this guy that I needed to respect. He was just himself and he was he was caring and he was funny and he was nice and my mom liked him and he was a great guy and he always read me fucking stories. I don't know what you want me to tell you. And he was alive, right? Yes, that was probably my favorite thing about him. So you did some damage to his. He's taken uh, the opposite damage, so now he's less likely to go with you. So he's got he's got wins and losses basically, and you have one win and one loss in this conversation. What if I told you you're not going to find him in the astral plane because I know where he is? The wind around his like that's blowing his hair around like stops, and he goes, "What do you mean you know where he is? I know he's in the astral plane. That's where he. That's where you sent him. That's no, where you sent his head." He's in this tower. I mean, I gotta, I gotta, you know, spoiler alert you. It's not, you know, necessarily a better option, but I know where he is and you can, you can talk to him. He, he's just not going to talk back. What the fuck does that mean? I mean, Ron, I mean, talk about, talk about how the other guy was a fake. I mean, that other guy was a phony, like even phonier than what stepfather is considered, you know, like what everybody's other like, guy? you know, you're the vampire. The vampire. All right, roll, let's say persuasion with advantage. 18. Oh, shit. Counts as another win. So you only need two more of those to get him on your side. He goes, what vampire? What vampire? What the fuck are you talking about? Well, Ron, the kids downstairs. Terry must have seen these kids. Hey, Terry, did you hang out with any other cool kids while you're here? And by cool, I mean like kind of pasty and pale and vampire. Oh, those are the, yeah, those kids are vampires. Yeah, those kids were vampires. But there's a daddy vampire. No, Terry Sr., my dad, was keeping those vampire kids in the dungeon safe so that he didn't have to kill them. Then how come he was so pasty and vampire-y? I don't know. That's just sort of his thing. I don't think he, it was he, his he thing. He went through this portal into this fucking weird world. It does a lot of weird shit to a lot of, a lot of us. Listen, I know your mother very well and intimately, and she oh, likes- Oh, God, don't God. say that. That's one loss. <laughs> <laughs> you got two losses and two wins left. I'm just saying she likes a hot-blooded man. That's another <laughs> loss. <laughs> you got one more loss. Guys, help me out. Hey, hey, Terry. What? You're, so you're saying the guy you thought was your dad was not a vampire. Correct. Well, if he wasn't a vampire, then those kids downstairs would probably still be vampires too, right? Because they had nothing to do with him. And look at this. The sky has changed. All the darkness around here has fallen away because that guy was not your father. It was an imposter. He was a vampire pretending to be your father. Terry. I'm going to turn around, by the way, and sprint downstairs because I need to grab one of these kids to prove that and have them maybe speak to it. So I'm going to... Okay. Just, I'm, really far. I'm right back. Well, yeah, it'll be a while. Terry Jr., based off of what you said, sounds like your dad was a great guy. Yeah, he was an amazing guy. It does. He doesn't sound like the sort of guy that would have come over here and tried to kill us. He doesn't sound like the sort of guy that would put kids in cages, even if they were vampires. Don't you think he acted a lot differently than the dad that you, you mentioned, the, the dad that you're talking about? Okay, so as you're saying that, Glenn comes back with the kid, comes back with Caitlin Kremdenich, and she's like... Yeah, I'm I'm human again. That guy was definitely a vampire. So uh, why don't all three of you roll persuasion with advantage? I got a 14. 25 with advantage. I got a 12. Okay. That kid he, helps. The kid helped. So Terry like looks from each of you and the shit you're saying to the kid. You see the barrier that's separating you two begin to waver a little bit. And he sort of just drops the book. He just says, uh, oh, God damn it. I always knew. I knew he wasn't my dad, but I just wanted him to be so so badly and i think i still do i i don't know if i care i think i would still rather have that than what this is than than all of this and he gestures at you and then gestures at himself terry i want to tell you a quick anecdote about my father just to remind you you have one win and one loss left so if you say anything that's wrong you're gonna lose him if you say anything that's good you got it my father was not a vampire however my father wasn't always um I wasn't always sure if he loved me. And 
he would take me fishing sometimes and I always I always thought that if I could just catch one fish then he would be proud of me and I never ended up catching that fish and um he never ended up being proud of me but I always thought that if he were really my dad then he would have been proud of me no matter what and so I think that the people who are related to you maybe they're your father and maybe they're not but sometimes your family is just who loves you and if you think that your family is gone they're not all gone I still love you and I I care about you and I'm sorry that you're feeling like this cuz I've felt like that before and it fucking sucked Terry is looking you dead in the eyes as you say all this. And then uh, he just closes his eyes and just sort of like almost collapses onto the ground, like into a sitting position. Like he just gives up, like his body is just like done trying to pretend that he's too strong for this. And the magic barrier comes down and you just see his shoulders begin to heave as he starts sobbing. Can I hug him? Yeah. So you go in for a hug and he doesn't resist and you're holding him and he's sobbing and like his arms slowly begin to encircle you. And uh, as he's having this moment, as the two of you are having this moment, he begins to open his mouth. And as he opens his mouth, he freezes and everything goes purple. And he begins to fade out of existence. He just like is looking around like it doesn't understand what's going on. And he looks at you and he just says, I'm I'm really sorry. I love you, son. And then he gets sucked through the dimensions and you hear a voice echoing from the tower itself. What a bunch of bullshit. What a bunch of namby-pamby, cowardly, overly excuse, feminine... Hey, excuse me. Whoa. What? Is this the... F- are you fucking kidding me? No. Did you... He just... Did you say... I got goddamn tears in my eyes, you piece of shit. You give that kid back. No. Hey, get down here and fight us. Guess what, asshole? We're coming to Ravenloft and we're getting those fucking kids back. We know where you are, you piece of shit. Good luck. Dungeons and Daddies is Matt Arnold as Daryl Wilson, Anthony Birch as our DM, Will Campos as Henry Oak, Beth May as Ron Stampler, and myself, Freddie Wong, as Glenn Close. Thank you, by the way, for those of you who are listening to the sound of my voice right now, reading these credits. I mean, look, I listen to podcasts. It's like the boring part. Everyone skips this. You're on, you're scrolling around looking for something else to listen to. I get it. But, you know, that's why we put something cool at the end. Plus, everybody keeps asking me what the name of the theme song and the outro is. And I read them at the end of the podcast. And that just I just know whenever they ask that they're not cool people who listen to the credits. That theme song and outro, by the way, is All Right by Maxton Waller. Thank you this week also to our Patreon supporters who make this show possible by putting it on their backs collectively. These are heroes with names such as Juste, Juste, I think, Cameron Ewer, Leanna Walsh, Marissa S., and Jenna Williams. You too can rise from the ranks of mere freeloader to podcast champion and be handsomely rewarded with cool extras and perks at patreon.com slash dungeons and dads. Coming later this week for EXL model supporters, all the tiers are named after Honda minivan models, it's going to be a mini documentary showcasing Matt Arnold's miniature painting prowess doing a Hero Forge paint of a Henry Oak mini. Plus, he's going to have a bunch of tips for beginner mini painters. Previously, we did a mini doc about the recording of the Silent Night moment from episode 8, that and so much more at patreon.com slash dungeons and dads don't like patreon fine how about some twitter for you that's at dungeons and dads hey twitter do you want to join the private dad van club on facebook at bit.ly slash dungeon dads too many bots on facebook then get on the subreddit at r slash dungeons and daddies too much of an echo chamber on reddit well too bad baby that's the internet these days anyway speaking of echo chambers thanks to everybody who's left itunes reviews <laughs> we just crossed 1000 reviews if you like this show why not leave us a review because we're feedback thirsty fools and love hearing from you all next episode is august 20th and again apologies to getty lee there was a time when you could read between the lines
Um, I also, this is not a dad fact, but I came up with a knock-knock joke this week, and I'm going to subject you all to it right now. Freddie and Matt have already heard it, so this is going to be especially... Prepare, like, lean back and prepare yourselves for this one, boys. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you, you made this one up or you heard I it? made this up. Okay. This is a fresh one. Okay. And if you have come up with this joke additionally, just tweet me and like we can co-credit on it, I guess. <laughs> but knock-knock. Who's there? Who's there? Yodel lady. Yodel lady who? Yodel lady who? Wow, 